Are you serious? Are you serious? Do not be deceived by Vladimir Putin and his regime out of Russia, the Kremlin. You can take Putin out of the KGB, but trust me, you cannot take the KGB out of Vladimir Putin. Now, some folks would say, uh, Paul, don't say anything about him. He's, he's a righteous man. He's the furthest thing from righteous. You just don't know history, nor do you understand the deep concepts of the spirit within the man. He is truly leading the bear from the north on an aggressive pursuit of many nations. I've got Bible prophecy I'm going to share with you in a minute. Of course, if you've read Ezekiel 38 and 39, you understand that uh, Russia plays a role as one of the five nations in the final battle, or in this great battle, I should say. But let me say this. Let's take a look at what's going on now. You might want to turn your Bible to Ezekiel chapter 39, and then back to where my devotion was, Habakkuk chapter 2. First of all, let me tell you what's going on. Uh, word coming out of Russia. The Russians have conducted new military maneuvers near its border with Ukraine to, uh, yesterday on May the 13th, 2013. And President Vladimir Putin said the world shouldn't blame his country for what he called Ukrainians' internal crisis. Uh, in Crimea, where the public will vote Sunday whether to break away from Ukraine and become part of Russia, jittery residents lined up at their banks to withdraw cash from their accounts amid uncertainty over the future of their peninsula, which Russia's Russian troops now control. Violence engulfed the eastern part of the region where violent clashes between pro-Russian demonstrators and supporters of the Ukrainian government uh, clashed, leaving one person dead. Quote, these people are afraid their banks will collapse and no one wants to lose their money, says one of the residents. Quote, nobody knows what will happen tomorrow. Now, it, notice here, this is... Ukrainian, Russian-speaking Ukrainians in Crimea, they're afraid. They're afraid. Russian troops are everywhere, and they're scared to death on what this might mean. Now, U.S. Secretary of State John F. Kerry and Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Larva, they plan to meet in London, England, today on this 14th, on 3-14-14, in a last-ditch bid to end the international standoff. Are you serious? What? Do you really think that's going to work? I'm glad they're meeting, but it won't work. Let's move on. Uh, they're trying to put an end to this uh, maneuvers by uh, uh, Russia. In Berlin, Chance uh, German Chancellor Angela Merkel sharply criticized Russia, saying that the territorial integrity of Ukraine cannot be compromised. Speaking to Germany's parliament, Chancellor Merkel said Russia risks massive political and economic consequences if it does not enter into, quote, negotiations that achieve results over the situation in Ukraine. She said the only way out of this crisis is through diplomacy and that the use of military is no option. And I want to say this, I hate war. I don't want to see any conflict at all. But I can tell you this. Diplomacy will not work. My wife Heidi said something very astute this morning. as She was watching some of the news and she, Vladimir Putin came on the screen and she said, Paul, I can see in him the spirit of Napoleon. And I stopped for a moment and said, wow, are you serious? She said, Paul, he has the spirit of Napoleon. Now, uh, let me just read on and share with you some more what happened. In the southern part of the regions, the maneuvers involving parachuting. Russia has begun to move troops into other sections of Ukraine, not just the peninsula of Crimea. They're involving 1,500 parachuting uh, uh, troops that are practicing in these military drills. They've also started using large artillery exercises involving 
8,500 soldiers and artillery rocket systems are being tested and fired in the South. During the Ukrainian crisis, the United States has added additional fighter jets to the, to the country of Poland and in Lithuania. Uh, but Russian responded by deploying six fighter jets of their own. Uh, so Ukraine's parliament in, uh, has voted to create 60,000 strong National Guard to help protect their country as its understaffed and underfunded military is in disarray. Uh, folks, Putin then made a very specific statement. Putin, who has received the parliament's permission, the Russian parliament's permission, to use Russian military in Ukraine, has warned that he reserves the right to use all means to protect Russian speakers uh, in Ukraine from violent nationalists, even though there has been no signs that they're facing such a threat. Merkel says all military options are off the table, and Putin says all military means, he will use all means to take Crimea. Now, they're going to vote to, to go. He's going to put a spin on that that's what the people wanted. But that's ridiculous. He came in there with his troops, stuck a gun to their head, and said, vote which side you want to be on. You tell me what hostage wouldn't vote to stay. So this is where Putin is. This is the situation developing in Russia and the Ukraine. And now we know what it says in Ezekiel 38 but about the nations that come against Israel even. But go to Ezekiel 39. Listen to the prophecy from the prophet Ezekiel from the Lord. Therefore thou son of man prophesy against Gog. Gog being the leader of Magog or the leader of the Russian Federation, or groups of nations that make up Magog. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I'm against the O Gog. I'm not saying that Vladimir Putin is Gog, but I'm saying whoever that leader is at that time, God will be against them because of their, their um, uh, desire to take Israel. He, God said, I'm against the O Gog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tabal, and I will turn thee back and leave but the sixth part of thee, and will cause thee to come up from the north parts, and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. And I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand, and will cause thine arrows to fall out of thy right hand. Thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel, thou and all thy bands or groups of nations you bring, and the people that is with thee. And I will give thee unto the ravenous birds of every sort, ravenous, raging birds, and to the beast of the field to be devoured, that thou, thou shalt fall upon the open field, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God, and I will send a fire in Magog, back in Russia and those surrounding or collectively uh, cooperative nations, and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles, in other words, the islands, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Now, I want you to do something else with me. Turn your Bible now to Habakkuk. Chapter 2. Now, I read this as my devotional this morning, so you might want to go back and watch that video and get the entire, receive the entire word of the Lord on this. But in this chapter, the prophet Habakkuk begins to prophesy about someone that sounds so familiar to an Antichrist. I'm not saying that this is the same as Gog, but I am saying somebody's going to rise up in the last days and pull all nations together. All right? And I believe that is going to be the Antichrist. Uh, and not, uh, so it's very important. And I'll just read these verses. In Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4 Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. They'll be dis Oh, no, don't be deceived. Yea, also because he transgresseth by vine. 
by, excuse me, by wine, he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home, who enlargeth his desire as hell, and is as death, and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations, and heapeth upon him all people. Now there is going to be an Antichrist rise in the last days. Two different scenarios, but we are getting some confirmations from the Old Testament prophets, and we're starting to see these things pull together. In my new book, Jerusalem Jihad, uh, there's Putin. Uh, he's on the cover. There you see John Kerry, President Obama, Benjamin Netanyahu, Jordan's King Abdullah II, and Vladimir Putin. Uh, they play major roles in this end-time apocalyptic scenario. They're not the only ones. There's a lot of current world events in this book, a lot of historical accounts, current world events, uh, how it relates Bible prophecy all through the book, and it is an end-time apocalyptic scenario. Russia plays a major role in this end-time scenario. Also, Tony Blair, uh, Prince William, of course, from the European Union and from the British Empire, Pope Francis I, Iran's Ayatollah Khomeini and President Hassan Rouhani, Hillary Rodham Clinton, all of these and others, many, many leaders, uh, Turkey's leader, many leaders that are involved in this in the end times. We're beginning to see the sides are being drawn. The teams are being selected. And we're watching an aggressive, very aggressive move by Putin. He will probably, without a doubt, take all of Ukraine. First Crimea, then the rest of it. It's a process, but he won't stop there, folks. Uh, as Heidi said, there's a Napoleon spirit upon Putin. I'll be right back with more current world events and how it relates to Bible prophecy. If you're not saved, please give your life to Jesus Christ. God bless.